Ilaman seke yetabahonde kesti yakanda bahai. Come on and lift those hands and give him total praise. For there is none like him in all the Amosha. There is none like him in all the earth. And because he is who he is, I lift my hands and I give him total praise. I give him all of me. Everything that I am, everything that I'm not. I wrap it up in my praise. And when I praise him, I put everything in that praise. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I put it all in that praise. Because if it had not been for those things in my life. That made me wonder. Those things in my life that made me afraid. Those things in my life that made me cry. I would not be able to give him total praise. <laughs> My praise would be one-sided if I only thanked him for the good days. My praise would be lopsided if I only praised him for the good things. But I praise him because we know that all things work together for good. It works together for good to them that love the Lord and are the cause according to his purpose now I'm looking for those I'm looking for those who love the Lord I'm looking around this room to find those who love the Lord and know for sure that you are the called of God that kind of the ocean if you are not sure that you are the called of God you better ask your problems if you've been called by God, you better ask your enemies. If you've been called by God, you better ask your trials. If you've been called by God, and the bigger the storm, the louder the witness. Look at somebody and say, I got a loud witness. Cause I had a loud storm. It tried to take me out. It tried to destroy me. It tried to hurt me, but I'm still here. Where my girls at, I'm still here. Through the storm and the rain, sickness and pain, I'm still here. Hey, God, how many came to have church? Can I have church here? Like I have church in full of that church. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I'm still here. That I've been through I'm still here I'm here to talk about it I'm here to sing about it I'm here to shout about it I'm here to give him total Total praise, total praise I just came to give God My time on acoustic I feel his presence, y'all don't mind. This is my kind of carrying on. If you if you gonna have church, you're gonna have church. And it feel like church in here tonight. Glory to God. I'm a church girl. From the ruler to the tutor. I love church. And I love good church. I love it when we clap our hands. I love it when we do our dance. Yeah, we're getting ready to move. We're getting ready to move behind you. But I just believe, Elder Chris, that if I give him what he wants, it makes it easy, Bishop, to get what I want. I enter into his courts with pray. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me move. Let me move. In, in case you've been wondering, I've been giving honor to God. That's what I've been doing the whole time. I've been giving honor to God and to his excellent greatness. It is my honor and my delight to be here with you. The Covenant Keepers International Alliance Women's Conference. 
I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to have been invited. And I'm glad to share with you tonight. I honor your presiding prelate, Bishop Hezekiah Walker. Yes, yes. I honor him and I honor your first presiding, the first vice presiding bishop, Bishop Darius Nixon. Second vice bishop, all of the bishops, Bishop Mason. I'm so glad to see all of you. God bless you all, my dear friends. Bishop West, it is a pleasure to be here with you. And certainly my bishop is here, Bishop Archie McGinnis the second. That's my dude, y'all know that. And so all of you, God bless you, uh, Lady Moore, who, who did such a wonderful, you know, you, you can't be doing stuff like that before the preacher, because I was leaning, and once I start leaning, I'll be like, huh? I got to get myself together, because so, I'm a worshiper. I don't just come to church. I come all the way to church. Brother Carl, I get all the way in there. You look for me, I'll be on the floor. That's, I'm the one, I'm on the floor. And so I thank God, thank God for spiritual discipline because I didn't fall out. Praise him. So glad for my son, Pastor Archie McInnes, the second, the third, I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. From our Pennsylvania church and his wife, Lady Chris, we're glad that you're here. My daughter is here, Chelsea, my son-in-law, my nephew, uh, all of of the family of Pennsylvania. I'm so glad. I'm going to let y'all sit down in just one second, but I'm, I'm going to honor the people because I always preach in New York or outside of Pennsylvania, but my family lives in Pennsylvania, so they got a chance to come and help me out tonight, and I'm grateful. While you remain standing, let's go to the Word of God. <laughs> Dr. Moses, I love you. Amen. Glad to see you tonight. And is that Pastor Hendrickson? I love you so much. So many of you who I've known since I was skinny is glad to. When I was in the back of the church while y'all were singing, tell you with my hair. I was in the, at all the concerts, all skinny and cute. It's been a long time. Look at somebody say, good living, good living, good living. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the book of St. John, chapter number 8, verses 1 through 11, we honor the Lord, and certainly we're here because of his word. We're here to hear what the Lord will say to us. St. John, chapter number 8, verses 1 through 11. Don't get nervous. If your feet hurt, I can read real fast. 1 through 11. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. When they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but... What sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. They which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. Scripture text verse, and Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. You may have your seats. We certainly honor the supervisor, national supervisor of women, international lady Monique Williams. Y'all make some noise. 
Ladies, holla, holla, holla. She came to our church last Friday night and she tore our church up, <laughs> carried on about Rahab's red rope. And what a blessing she was to the body of women of full effect. I honor you and I'm grateful to God. I know it's because of you that I'm here and I'm grateful to God. God will give you somebody to like you. <laughs> Hallelujah. After having been consistent, perhaps not major, but consistent over the past 45 years of my life in ministry, if I've learned nothing else, I've learned that if you say what God tells you to say, he'll always give you a place to say it. I also learned that if you do not say, good to see you beautiful, what he tells you to say, he does not need you. <laughs> and you will soon disappear into whatever happened to so-and-so-ville. Because I love God, I love his people, and I vow not to toy with your emotions or fool with your faith for my own delusions of grandeur. It is very tempting to compromise and flow with a certain culture when that flow might get you into some big doors and on to some bigger platforms. But the problem is that in order to stay in those doors and stay on those platforms, you have to keep doing what you did to get there. And if it's not authentic, that can be exhausting. I still believe that the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. At the top of the year in 2023, I preached a three-part series entitled Exit Signs, Exit Wounds, and Exit Strategies. Throughout last year and into this year, I have not had to question God as to what to preach, but rather, Lord, which one of these? do you want me to bring to your people? I've had some periodic variations trying to keep up with themes and events, but for the most part, it's been one of these three. As I sought the Lord about ministering here tonight, he led me to the message called Exit Strategies. Look at somebody and say Exit Strategies. This is pretty much Exit Strategies Revisited, if you know what I mean. Interestingly enough, our text in chapter 8 begins with what could have been the last verse in chapter number 7, where Jesus had just had a very challenging day. The Jews' feast of the tabernacle was at hand, and Jesus chose not to walk in Jewry or in Judea, but in Galilee, because those Jews sought to kill him. His disciples urged him to go into Judea. Bust up the feast and show thyself to the world, they said. As tempting as that may have sounded, Jesus exercised the mastery of spiritual discipline and said, my time is not yet. But y'all can go. <laughs> Even in Galilee, Jesus went to the temple and taught the Jews. And the Jews marveled, saying, how know if this man letters having never learned? Here's a point just for fun, just because you didn't teach me doesn't mean I never learned. Here they go again. Jesus says to them, did not Moses give you the law? And yet none of you even keep the law. Why are you trying to kill me? He carried on in such a way speaking the truth to them that it was clear he was not afraid of them. The scripture says, then they sought to take him. But no man laid hands on him because his hour was not yet come. Here is the evidence and the reason for the mastery of spiritual discipline. Do not yield to the temptation to move before your time. Am I preaching yet? He kept teaching and they kept interrupting. He kept teaching, they kept interrupting. Until finally at the end of chapter number 7, verse number 43, it says, And every man went unto his own house. 
But 8 and 1 says, but Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. It is the truth that he did not have a house of his home to go to, but clearly he had somewhere to stay. The home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus was just a stone's throw away, but he chose to go. Somebody say he chose. He chose. To go unto the Mount of Olives. It was at the Mount of Olives that he was able to steal away in personal prayer with his father. It was there where he would be strengthened and revived for his next assignment. Look at somebody and say, stop at the Mount of Olives. Stop in the prayer room between assignments. The time was drawing near that he would be crucified. It was at that crushing place that Jesus got ready for whatever would come next in his life. Tell somebody prayer helps. When you are prone to steal away into your prayer place, you can be prepared for whatever comes next. These days, you never know what's coming next, but you should be prepared. When Bishop and I were in Jerusalem, we walked and prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane across, across from the Kidron Valley on the Mount of Olives. It was full of olive trees. The ground was full of crushed olives. It was impossible to go there and not get oil on your shoes or on your clothes. Our text finds Jesus refreshed and revived, oily, huh? <laughs> ready for another day of ministry, another day of whatever, whatever. He came again into the temple, and he sat down, and he taught them. Here they come again. Scribes and the Pharisees dressed in their everyday regalia of long robes, pomegranates, looking very regal, respected, and religious. But this time they had with them a woman whom they had obviously dragged through the streets of Galilee, tattered and torn, and they set her in the midst of this crowd of listeners in front of Jesus. As a continuance to all of their words, some questions from the night before, they said to him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Y'all tracking with me? Now Moses and the Lord commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Of course, they could care less about the woman or the Lord. This they did to tempt Jesus. While Jesus is ignoring them and writing on the ground, let's pause and take a few moments and talk about how this possibly relates to us, ladies. Here's the scene. Jesus, Pharisees, the woman, and the crowd. Can you see it? First off, let's see what Jesus had to say about these scribes and Pharisees in Matthew number 23. More than seven times he pronounced scathing public accusations and woes upon them, accusing them of hypocrisy and pretentiousness, culminating with these very offensive words. And I quote, the teachers of religious law and Pharisees are official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their example. For they don't practice what they teach. They crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. Everything they do is for show. On their arms, they wear extra wide prayer boxes with scripture verses inside. And they wear robes with extra long tassels. And they love to sit at the head of the table at banquets and in the seats of honor in the synagogue. They love to receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplaces. They love to be called rabbi. Jesus says, what sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law and Pharisees? Hypocrites, <laughs> for you build tombs for the prophets your ancestors killed. Jesus said this. And you decorate the monuments of godly people your ancestors destroyed. Then you say, 
if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would have never joined them in killing the prophets. But in saying that, you testify against yourselves that you are indeed the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Go ahead and finish what your ancestors started. Snakes, sons of vipers, how will you escape the judgment of hell? Clearly, he was not very pleased with these scribes and Pharisees. Now let's deal with the woman, the accused. In fact, she is the very reason that we're all gathered here tonight. She is guilty, caught in the very act of adultery. So before we deflect our thinking to the obvious, what is the obvious? You can't commit adultery by yourself. And before you ask, where is the man in all of this? Let us face this stark reality. It doesn't matter where he is. Why? Because him being dragged does not make her any less guilty. Y'all didn't see that coming, right? The fact of the matter is, if you didn't wash the dishes, you don't get credit just because you swept the floor. The dishes still need to be washed. Just because they didn't drag him through the streets, it doesn't make her innocent. In fact, it's very important that we embrace the fact that she was guilty as charged. Guilty. Caught, outed, cold busted on Front Street, receipts. <laughs> Under the bus, she has no way out of this. Can we agree? What's the charge? The charge here is adultery. There's no way in the world I can preach this text and not deal with the charge. I would like to sweep it under the rug and act like I didn't read it. But the law does not care that this crime may be a matter of the heart. What would make a person commit adultery? Look straight ahead, don't look around. What makes a woman creep out on a man she vowed to love, honor, and obey. What makes a man have a whole relationship with another woman or man while he is married? What makes a person violate a covenant that they made between God and themselves. Here's the truth. There is no black and white answer for that. Now, some of y'all got answers. I can see it all over your face. I'll tell you what. No. Some of us who were the other woman or are the other woman probably saying if she handled her business, it wouldn't need me. You getting played. Move along. There is no black and white. I'm acting up, Mason. Don't tell nobody. I'm trying to be real nice about this thing here. There is no black and white answer for that. As much as we may try to spiritualize it and make it as black and white as we can, there is no black and white. Here's an ever even truer truth. While we may not have all committed adultery, we have all done some stupid and dumb things in our lives just trying to be in love. Can I get a witness here? We've all had some mistakes in judgment trying to be in love. That which started out as the happiest moments in our lives could have ended up being the most painful. Devastating memories of our lives. Look straight ahead. Don't look to the left or the right. But the worst thing of all of this is that the pain does not give us an out. 
The mistakes and judgment do not give us a pass. The wages of sin is still death. The Pharisees knew that. Even though they themselves were hypocrites who called Jesus master while plotting to kill him. They knew that her sin was on her and had nothing to do with them. This is the season in our lives when we take accountability for our own action. There's no way we can get delivered. There's no way we can get set free. There's no way we can get an exit if we don't feel like we need a way out. Mm. They knew that she was guilty. They knew that she deserved death. She was guilty, and they were absolutely right. She had no way out of her punishment. She had no exit, but, somebody say but. But, but they brought her to Jesus. If they had brought her to any other religious leader, she would be condemned to death. But they brought her to Jesus, who was already prepared for them. He was already prayed up. He had been to the Mount of Olives. They brought her to Jesus, who was her exit strategy. Jesus stooped down, and with his finger, he wrote on the ground as if he heard them not. Jesus is letting them get all riled up. Yeah, I love him. <laughs> He's saying nothing and they're getting all antsy. They began to ask him again and again. Pretension rose in them because they just knew they had him this time. He let them keep asking, what are we going to do now, Jesus? What you going to say about this? Jesus, we got you now, Jesus. That's what I love about Jesus. He understands that everything doesn't require an answer. Let them talk. You ain't got to clap back all the time. Let them talk, and they just kept asking. They were ready to trip him up. Have we finally trapped the master? So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself. Say it with me. He lifted up himself. Said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. My man, I'm still trying to figure out. Jesus is both God and man. God, very God, man, very man. He can relate. Tell somebody he can relate. But he is also omniscient. 
omniscient. That means he knows everything about everything. I need somebody to testify and say he knows everything about everything. That's why I ain't trying to hide from none of y'all because he knows everything about everything. That's why I ain't bugging out if you caught something on me. You late to the party. He knows everything about everything. So that means y'all ready? He knew their sins. And could have used this opportunity in front of the listening crowd to do to them what they had done to the woman. But he had grace. Sean said, all I want right now from Jesus, just give me a little more grace. He let their own conscience convict them. The Bible said they left him alone. If you want to get your enemies out of your face, give them a little grace. I know it's easy to get them back. It feels better when you can get them back. But I'm showing you what Jesus did. He had every opportunity to list this, that, and the other. I know what you did last summer. I know what you did last night. I know what you did when you were on your way to the woman's house. I know all of that, but I'm not going to put you on blast in front of this crowd. Because I am here for the woman you brought to me. We are here tonight because of that woman. Can I preach a little bit? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He let their own conscience convict them. It's called grace. It's called God's righteous judgment. He didn't give them a pass. He didn't give them a penance. He did not violate the law, but he gave them time. Time is your ally. Look at somebody and say, I thank God for time. Because there are things I didn't know when I was 17. There are things I thought I was smart enough to do when I was 21. There are things I threw my hips in God's face about when I was 25. And everybody saw it and some of them condemned me. But God gave me time. Time to get myself together. Time to find out where the exit strategy was. Touch a neighbor and say time is your ally. I'm behaving myself. Stay with me. Now the Bible says that Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. This is the place that she needed to be. This is the place where she did not intend to be earlier that day. But God has a way to get us from where we are to where we need to be. She was alone with Jesus. I want to talk to those of you who feel like you got to tell everything on Facebook. I want to talk to those of you who feel like you got to vent everything that's going on at Alamahandia in your life. I want to share with you that tell your prayer partner everything you're going through until your prayer partner tells her prayer partner and her prayer partner tells her prayer partner and ain't nobody praying no more than talking about you. There is a place that you can be where you are alone with Jesus. It feels lonely until you realize it's the best place you've ever been. When your friends walk away from you and your bestie stop being your bestie and when trouble rises in your life and everybody who was for you turn against you, it's time for you to be alone with Jesus. Is there anybody here who has ever been alone with Jesus? Not even by choice. You were alone because hell got on the back of you. 
You were alone because your story went on blast. You were alone because you were guilty as charged. But I'm here to tell you that being alone with Jesus is the best place you can ever be. The Bible says that the Pharisees had set her in the midst. But now my Bible says she's standing in the midst. God's grace has come to lift you up. God's grace has come to bring you from a low place. God's grace has come to cause you to lift up your hung down head. He said, where are your accusers? Woman, this was never about you. You were a pawn in the Pharisees game. They came for me. We must understand that the devil is not trying to break our hearts. He's not trying to embarrass us. He's not trying to make us unhappy. His problem is not even with us. Can I talk about him? I came to stomp a mud hole in the neck of the devil because he been playing games with our mind for far too long. Tell somebody this ain't even about you. It feels like it's about you because your mind is always on you. It feels like everything is about you. Poor you, you the victim, you Job, you going through. But I came here tonight to tell you this whole story story uh, was not even about that woman uh, it was about Jesus they came to trap Jesus uh, just like a woman y'all well, can I go here uh, you married to a good man uh, you got a great man in your life like me you got a great man in your life come pushing up on you uh, telling you your eyes are like a raging fire uh, yeah they tell you I'll buy you the stars and put the moon on layaway uh, you so fine uh, you so fine you blow my mind uh, yeah and you going for the okie doke uh, you getting played cause it's not about you uh, he don't care nothing about you he's trying to bring your husband down uh, he's trying to play a game uh, to make your husband feel I got your girl uh, and you around here walking around talking about you don't even smile at me you don't even smell my cologne old Joe can smell my c- cologne he got one tooth and you running behind old Joe cause he complimented you can I teach that's the woman's conference This, well, we're not going to get played in this season. Look at somebody say, I ain't getting played. I woke up this morning and I saw both of these stomachs. I saw Walona on the top and Esther Rowe on the bottom. I always knew they was there. How come he don't see that? All of a sudden, you done became a beauty queen. You got a mirror at home. You already know what you're working with. How are we going to get so plain that somebody tells us, oh God, just because my husband didn't tell me, now I'm getting lost in the emotional sauce. I'm going to keep us from getting played tonight. You see, because the woman was caught The woman was dragged. The woman was embarrassed. But she found out here that it was not never about her. Yeah, before she was ever born, Satan made a plan. He told God, I will exalt my kingdom above your kingdom. And by hook or by crook, by any means necessary, I'll bring your name down. If you hurt people, deceive people, trick people, then there are no holes barred. I will humiliate the church. I'm preaching for real right now. I will humiliate the church and make the world think the power does not work. So I'll trick them into adultery. I'll trick them into fornication. 
God tricked him into homosexuality and all kinds of public and private sin. And then I will expose them. Why? Because I don't like them? Why? Because I, I don't care for them? No, because the world wants to believe that the power does not work. But I'm here to tell you that we are not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power. It is the power of God unto salvation. If the world only sees our proclivities, if the world only sees our guilt, if the world only sees when we get caught, the world will believe that the power doesn't work. How you gonna get me saved if you ain't, it ain't working for you? It's the trick of the enemy and I came to destroy him. I came to put him on blast. I came to wake up the minds of the believers and let you realize you're in a bigger fight than you can see. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What is a stronghold? A stronghold is a mental image that's stuck in your mind. And when we think too much of ourselves, when we think about ourselves all day, our feelings, our mind, our hopes, our dreams, and that's how we fill our minds, it becomes a stronghold. So all the devil has to do is touch our stuff. All the devil has to do is touch us. And we forget, God Almighty, what the warfare is really about. I'm almost there. Can y'all walk with me a little bit? I really only got a little bit left. I feel it. Jesus begins to speak to her. Put me in whatever key I belong in. Y'all know I'm in the key of follow me. Wherever I go, just follow me. Just don't stop in the middle finding my key because I'm going to turn around on you. Just act like, just keep on playing in the right key. I'm going to get back to where I need to be. Jesus turns around and he begins to speak to the accused. The entire time, Jesus is having a conversation with her accusers. But the table yeah, has turned now. Jesus begins to speak to the woman. I'm looking forward to my time with him. So when I get close to him and when I get alone with him, not only do I talk to him, but I'm waiting for the time that he talks back to me. Prayer is not a monologue. It's a dialogue. But you need time in his presence. You need time alone with him. If you spend time with him, after a while, you're going to run out of words. And when you run out of words, he's going to start talking. And now things in your life can change. They begin to change because Jesus is talking. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, it ain't going to get right until we hear what Jesus has to say. I heard my accusers. I heard from my enemies. I heard from those who trying to kill me. But now I'm hearing from the one who loves me. Now I'm hearing from the one who cares. I'm hearing from somebody who I know has my best interests in his heart. I'm hearing from the man who still the waters. I'm hearing from the man who calms the sea. I got an audience with the master. I got a front row seat in the master's life. I'm standing in the midst of Almighty God. You can't tell me nothing. I got his ear. He's got mine. We're having a conversation.
visitation. How many adulterers get a chance like that? How many ranked sinners get a chance like that? I'm here to tell you there's a room at the cross for you. The millions have come. There is still room. Room for one. He said, where are your accusers? Where are those that brought you here? Who brought you here? Now, ask yourself, how did you get here? You're not supposed to be here. You don't belong here. I am the king. I'm the king of kings. And you're here. Your enemy want to know, how did you get here? After all you've done, how did you get here? What are you doing in the presence of God? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I belong here. Say, I belong here. He made a place for me. It was an exit strategy. It cost me some embarrassment. I had to cry. I had to be dragged. I had to be insulted. It hurt me. But it got me. It got me out. Tell your neighbor whatever it takes to get me out. I'm willing to let it happen. Lie on me. Tell the truth. Throw me under the bus. Talk about me. It's all right. If it gets me out, I'm getting out of every stone. I'm getting out of every trouble. I'm getting out of every sin. I'm getting out of every chokehold. I'm getting out. I've been in there way too long. I didn't know another way to live. But Jesus gave me an exit strategy. I depended on my adultery to be my lifestyle. But Jesus said, I get it out. I came to give you a way out. Where are you tonight? Can I evangelize for just a few moments? Where are you tonight? You've been stuck too long. You've been down too long. You've been locked up too long. You can't walk in your purpose because you're locked in to some sin. But she said, I'm here. I'm here right now. I'm here for you. I'm here to get you out. I'm here to draw you out. I'm here to lift you up. Lift up your head. Oh, ye can be ye lifted up. Ye everlasting God. The king is here. Tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, the king is here. The king is here. Can I preach? The king is here. He's not here just to make you dance. He's not here just to make you shout. He's here to get you out. He's here to give you an exit strategy. You in a relationship that you've been in too long. The Holy Ghost told you, you gotta get out. Your mama told you, you gotta get out. Your conscience told you, you gotta get out. But you didn't know how. You were under somebody's influence. You were under a spirit of manipulation and control your right mind said don't answer the phone but one sound of that voice got you in it again tonight I came to give you an exit strategy you got purpose you got a calling you got destiny it's on hold cause you're locked up but God said I'm here to give you an exit strategy. I need a witness. Tell somebody I know what.
what it's like to, to be on lockdown. I know what it's like to, to be bound. I know what it's like to want to be free. But one day I came to Jesus just as I was weary, worn, and sick. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's not about them. It's all about Jesus. Can I introduce you to a man who knows everything about everything, but his love looks beyond what he knows and says, come on, come unto me. All ye that labor, all ye that labor, I feel the Holy Ghost. All ye that labor, somebody's tired, somebody's been working, somebody's weary, somebody's stressed, somebody had enough, but you can't get free. Tonight is the night you get free. Yeah, yeah, I'm walking out of one existence and I'm walking into another existence the me you used to see you ain't never gonna see her again I I got an exit strategy shall I shall I shall I shall I Let's get some deliverance up in here. Who know my mother that I'm behind? Then about to come to church just to have a good time. Just because you free don't mean your sister ain't bound. It's too many of us in love with a man who is not our man. Too many of us got a secret thing going on with a leader. Too many y'all looking at me. Too many of us walking around like the first lady and don't know we the fifth. Too many of us walking around with red bottom shoes but ain't got no deliverance. You can't walk in your purpose if you're busy walking in somebody else's. I came to help you get free. I came so you can do your assignment. Sometimes I gotta remind myself of what I've been called to do. This is drama. This is nonsense. This is keeping me back. I can't preach. I can't deliver. I can't go forward. Cause something got a hold on me. But tonight is the night for your exit. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Say neighbor. There's an exit strategy. It's different for you than it is for me. Some of us can't sleep at night. Some of us have difficult dreams. Some of us got guilt burden and nobody knows. But others of us got caught. Others of us got told on. It doesn't matter. It's your exit strategy. Come on, let's turn it. Can I go old school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody help me fan the flame. Come on, let the glory of the Lord fill this temple. Let the power of the Holy Ghost overshadow. Where's Mary? Mary, how can these things be? Seeing, I know not a man, the Holy 
Holy Ghost shall overshadow you. I still believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Shall I tell somebody I still, I still believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. I got five minutes. You can stare at me or you can be free. You can watch me or you can get to living. Come on, children. Clap your hands and give them a real praise. Their deliverance in real praise. Their victory in real praise. Lord, I thank you for what you brought me from. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in me. Lord, I praise you because the things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. Lord, I praise you because I used to be that woman I used to be guilty of charge. Lord, I want to praise you because you brought me out. Lord, I want to thank you because you delivered me. Where are the praises? If you praise him for what he's done for you, somebody who's still bound can get delivered. If we praise him, praise him for real. I'm not talking about no show. Praise him for real. Praise him from the bottom of your belly. I remember when I cried. I remember when I tried. Tried to preach. Had to preach. Couldn't cancel. Because I, I was a backslider while I was inside. I ain't got no witnesses in here. I was a backslider with a mic in my hand. I was in trouble, but I had to preach. I can't cancel, cause I know I'm gonna get delivered. I can't cancel and tell the people I can't come tonight, cause I'm bound. I can't tell the people I can't preach tonight, cause the devil got me. I had to preach while I was in trouble, but while I was preaching, the Holy Ghost came upon me. Where Samson put me in the midst of my enemies, blind me, but I'm gonna do my assignment. Yes, have you ever had to cry on your way to preach? Have you ever? the crime after you preach you wanted to say Lord I'm sorry I won't do it again but you already knew you had plans after service can I keep it a buck oh. but tonight is tonight you become free Jesus said where are your accusers? She said, I have none. He said, neither do I condemn you. I judged you with a righteous judgment. I tried you. I investigated you. I searched you. Because you said, Lord, shine a searchlight on me. And if you find him, anything that should not be taken away I judged you I read you I know you but I didn't condemn you there is therefore no condemnation to them oh y'all don't want to have no church in here he said I I don't condemn you I love you enough to tell you how to get out I love you enough to give you a way out. Oh, oh, how he loves me. Oh, oh, how he loves me. Everybody talking about me, but he, he loves me. Everybody got news about me, but he, he loves me. He gives her. A final command. I could probably end the whole sermon right there and push a praise. 
But we can't end this story without addressing the sin question. Because sin is the blame. Sin opens a portal for the devil to come in my life and wreak havoc. <laughs> it was not until I realized that when I sin, when I play with the devil, I open the door for him. And he gets the right to touch my stuff, touch my family, mess with my kids. That's my incentive for holy living. I'm not the one that keep on hollering, holiness is still right, it ain't never been wrong. I got a reason. Cause I realized I was getting played by all I'm on Shakaya Lamasia. I realized I was getting played by the devil. This may not be the preaching kind of preaching you used to, but if we could just get delivered and set free, we can walk in our purpose. He says to her. Daughter, go and sin no more. For those of you who keep on saying that's impossible, ain't nobody perfect, we all got something. The moment Jesus said it, she was empowered to do it. Go and sin no more. I know it's going to be difficult for you, but hold on a few more days. Girl, don't sin no more. I'm glad he didn't say don't do adultery no more. Because it's only us that identify sin and name sin and make one bigger than the other. Jesus is letting her know that sin is a game you don't want to play. Because you're going to lose. Satan comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his only purpose. He wants you to be so involved with your feelings and your emotions that you got to do something to feel better. He wants you to believe that a man who does so much for so many ought to have a little something for himself. Sorry, this is a woman's conference. Scratch that from the record. He wants you to believe that you deserve to be happy. He wants you to believe that a little something, something ain't gonna hurt you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. And when your kids come home and they're strange, where did Junior get that from? Strange behavior. You open the portal. He says, wait and don't sin. What am I waiting for? He says, in just a few days. Getting ready to do something incredible. I'm getting ready to do something outlandish. I'm getting ready to free you from sin and the power of sin. It's gonna hurt me. They gonna drag me like they drag you. They gonna hurt me. Like they hurt you, they're going to humiliate me. Like they humiliated you, uh, they're going to give me a cross uh, and make me carry it. Uh, they're going to whip me uh, all night long. Uh, hold on. Uh, I'm getting uh, to deliver you forever. Say, uh, they're getting ready to crucify me. Uh, they're going to lift me up. Uh, but I. Uh, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men onto me. They're going to crucify, crucify me and I'm going to die. They're going to put me in a grave. And on the third day, I'm getting up with the old power. I'm going down into the depths and I'm taking the keys of in the grave and everything that had you bound I am gonna free you 
move from it you will no longer have the can't help it you can't help it now but I am coming to deliver you yes hold on my sister I'm coming to give you permanent deliverance and tonight in this meeting look at somebody and say neighbor it's already done tell that devil it's already done my freedom is done my my deliverance is here my life is here he did it for me it's finished and he died for me he delivered me he set me free on the cross of Calvary he took my sins away he became sin for me the propitiation of my sin and my sin are on him so tell that devil behold he's given me power to tread upon scorpions and upon serpents and over all the power of the devil touch somebody and say you have been set free I need a witness in here I need a witness in here I need a witness in here I need a witness in him. If you've been set free, you ought to tear up the church. If you've been set free, you ought to give God glory. And if you know Hekai, you're not the same anymore. You ought to give God praise. And it might be only three of us in here. But you know where he brought you from. You remember how deep you were. And God, he delivered you. I'm looking for three witnesses that said I I owe God this praise I owe God this worship we gotta go home but I ain't leaving without hitting this floor yes cause he delivered me I'm not leaving without giving God glory cause he delivered me I'm not leaving without showing God that you're the best thing that ever happened in my life I had some trials I had some storms I had some difficulty but I thank God for Jesus where are you everybody clap your hands all I need is one praiser all I need is one who can break the ice your road got ice on it you need to break that ice and you need to give God the praise don't conform to the crowd step out of the crowd I got to praise somebody I got to praise say I got to praise cause he delivered me I can't get no witness well we need to have more church bishop because ain't nobody delivered maybe we need to have a shut in tonight cause if ain't nobody delivered we need a deliverance service if you've been free show some sign ain't not even one in the balcony I ain't got no praises you praise God in your church praise God in this church well you gonna have to praise him by yourself cause if you praise him with this one they gonna be trying to figure out what you have been delivered from I ain't fighting with y'all I gotta go back to Allentown but I'm looking for somebody who said I came to the women's conference so that I can get my deliverance and get my praise yeah I got an exit strategy he brought me out he brought me out he got me out of that thing yeah y'all got 30 
seconds. Only I, all I need is a few people who's not ashamed of where God brought you from to give God the best praise you got. That's your best. Give him the best praise. Push yourself out of yourself into a place of worship. I'm so glad he delivered me. Now when I preach, I can preach with power. Now when I preach, people can be there. I got purpose. I got purpose. I can live. Praise him, Nixon. I can live in my purpose. I can live in my calling. I can do my assignment because I'm free. Praise the Lord. No more chains are holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Hekataba. Go ahead. Go ahead. I need somebody to break out. I need an old school storefront church pray. Y'all know the storefront. We so cute now. Somebody who been set free. You used to be a crackhead. But Elder Monique said put it down crackhead. And the Holy Ghost got you. You need to give God the best praise you got. You used to be Rahab. But God delivered you. Ain't no shame in my game. I need a praiser up in here. Walk in your purpose. Do your assignment. I hope it ain't no Pharisees in here. We got some Pharisees in here looking around trying to see if somebody. Uh oh. That's what I like. Uh oh. I ain't scared of no Pharisee. I ain't scared of no scribe. You wrote it down. You put it on Facebook, but I ain't scared of you. Because I've been set free. I've been delivered. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bishop Mason, one of these days, we're going to have a conference. Where the Holy Ghost falls so good that the bishops were there. I ain't messing with you because this is the woman's conference. If the women don't praise them in the woman's conference, ain't very much more we can do. Yeah, they get ready to see somebody new come out of you. There's a new you coming out of you. And I don't care what the world say about it. I'm going to do my assignment. I'm going to do what God called me to do. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Stop being scared. Walk in it. Stop being a jelly back. Walk in it. Stop doubting. Walk in it. Stop looking at your past. Walk in it. Walk in your purpose. Be bold about it. God called me. God anointed me. God chose me. God lifted me up. And I'm not ashamed. I got purpose. I matter. 
man of, a man of the God. He thinks the world of me. I'm enough. I'm enough. I'm enough. Me too. He called me and your sons and your daughters. Somebody give him the best friend. I belong to God. I belong to God. Somebody been hurt so bad. You've been wounded in a place where you don't think you matter. You don't think you belong. But I'm here to give you an exit strategy. Come out of depression. Come out of fear. Come out of doubt. I got to finish. Come out of that mess. Come out of that. You too smart for that. You too anointed for that. You are too beautiful for that. You've been called to a higher place, to a higher place. Get out of low level thinking and low level conversation. Stop wasting your time and come on up to your purpose. The world is in trouble. And we need you. Father, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for exposing me. Thank you for showing me. Thank you for deflating me. Thank you for humbling me. Because it is he that is humble. That is a base that will be exalted. Now come on. How does somebody with such a filthy past get to stand before people and help them to come up? Because my history kept me humble that's why I can't be grand I don't need 15 adjutants I don't need nobody carrying nothing for me I don't need all of that I appreciate it but I don't need it I don't need a special seat I don't need nobody to call my name my history keeps me humble my history was my exit strategy As long as the people didn't know, I could be grand and great and wonderful. When I messed around and had a conversation with Jesus, and he showed me who I really am. It hurt me to see me. the way I really am. But if I had not seen myself the way I really was, I could never help anybody else. So, I lost some time, yeah? But God said, I'm getting ready to restore the time. Anybody lost time fooling around with the devil? You should be way down the road by now. I got a witness for you. His name is Jonah. He messed up. Was in the flesh. But when he got ready, God expedited the time. I'm prophesying to somebody right now.
God is getting ready to expedite. He's giving you your time back. Hezekiah. And you going to do it one day when it took up this three. You gonna do in one year what it took up us ten years to do. As soon ah, as you see the exit sign. As soon as you see the exit sign, run toward it. You got exit wounds. Because it hurts you to get free. But it was a strategy for you. You gonna heal. You ain't gonna die. It's just the wound, the bullet went in, but it came straight out. You gonna survive. And God, the community of the number home. Now I see some of y'all took a little while. You had to get warmed up. Now I'm ready to go and you ready to praise him. You got 30 seconds. Say five, six, five, six, seven, eight. Give him your praise. Hey, hey, hey. Go on and use your overtime minutes. Use your rollover minutes. You got time to give the Lord his praise. You got time to give the Lord his praise. Thirty seconds, that's all I need. God has given you an extra moment. God has given you an extra moment to break out. I ain't too cute to praise him. Nope. Nope. Yes, God. Something. We can ready to go, but perhaps there's somebody in this room who is not saved. You like church. You go to church because you like church. You like singing. But you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal savior. You got this moment in time to be free from sin and the control of sin. Sin no longer will have dominion over you. God says I'm opening a door for you to come out and I'm opening a door for you to come in. If you're here or you're watching live and you stumbled upon this live and you don't know Jesus as Lord over your life, I say that because we know him as Savior. He's the savior of the world, but he wants to be Lord over your life. He wants you to check with him before you make a decision. In all your ways, acknowledge me so I can direct your path. Sin made you make bad choices. Sin caused you to do the wrong thing instead of the right thing. I ain't talking to nobody particular because it happened to me, that's why. I know that sin is the blame. S living in sin is like driving a car that needs a wheel alignment. It's still a car, but in order to get where you gotta go, you pulling. You trying to go left, Girlfriend want to go right and you got to work hard just to get home But when you get saved 
is getting a will, W-I-L-L, alignment. When your will is in alignment with his will for your life, the struggle is over. Only the way of a transgressor is hard. All you have to do is believe in your heart that Jesus died for the sins of the world. That he died an ignominious and horrible death, not so we could have church and be happy. He died the most insulting kind of death so that we could be free from sin. And then you confess with your mouth that this Jesus is Lord over my life. And my Bible tells me that if you do these things, you shall be saved. And this time, he says, go and sin no more, but he gives you power. Yeah. Nixon, he's the only one that calls us what we are not and then gives us power to become what he has already declared us to be. While we were in sin, he calls us the righteousness of God. And while we were yet sinners, he died for the ungodly so that we might be saved. I believe that somebody has done that tonight. If you do not belong to a church, you're watching live and you don't have no church, you just like church. Get you a Bible-believing church and a Bible-believing pastor. Preferably one who has the Holy Ghost. And walk in your purpose. Somebody clap those hands and give God praise. I'm going to ask the constituents of this meeting and those that are in this building to help meet the budget by sowing a seed. It is my custom, and it's a crazy custom. It's funny, it's a joke, but I, I do it because when Joseph was the only one that had grain, he said, go get Benjamin. Ain't nobody going to eat till I see Benjamin. So I'm going to ask those of you that will sow a $100 seed with me, bring a Benjamin. If you would stand. See my joke? That's a good joke. If you would stand with that seed. If you're anything like me, they can't ask for too much money in church. I owe God everything. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody said, I ain't even planning to sow no whole hundred dollars tonight, but, but the Lord has blessed me. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop. You're doing something when the bishops come to your service. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? You want to sow that one? Thank you, my sister. Without fanfare, you don't need your name put on the screen. You don't need none of that. You just, you just want to help meet the budget of the meeting. You don't want to know what they're doing with the money. The only people ask what they're doing with the money is people who don't do nothing in church. You don't have a clue. <laughs> we ain't doing much with your money because you don't give none. Anybody else want to sow a $100 seed? I'm just asking, no pressure. Thank you but we want to be a blessing. Don't let Bishop Walker come back tomorrow and find out we came up short tonight. He may never let me come back. I'm just teasing. Thank you. You got a $50 seed somewhere between 50 and 100. Would you sow it tonight? Thank you. I remember Bishop Bond and I were at Bible Way one day. We used to find each other in church. He'd say, Johnson, he's my Ebenezer. And that was our cue to start dancing. And one day he was sitting with me at Bible Way, and it was offering time. He said, Johnson, give me, give me some money. I said, give you some money? You got on $500? No. He said, I ain't got no money. I said, so if you ain't got no money, don't go. He said, I need to be seen. <laughs> I gave him $5. <laughs> I 
If you want to be seen tonight, get $50 in your hand. <laughs> Thank you so much. You got that seed. Thank you. Thank you for trusting God with your seed. Thank you. You don't have a $50 seed. Thank you, my friend in the back. Thank you. Thank you, sis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for standing with those seeds in your hand. Thank you. You are acknowledging. Thank you. That Kai, I'm back there. I don't know. I'm looking in the wrong. It's the lights. I'll be seeing people. Thank you. You got a $25 seed or more that you will sow. I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I've been doing this a long time. And I learned never to manipulate. I only ask. Thank you. If I said I need 77 people with $77 and you're going to get 77 miracles in 77 days, the line will probably be at the door. Because we like spooky. Those of you that just want to sow because you want to be an asset and not a liability to the meeting. Thank you for your seed. Whatever seed you have, just do me a favor. Don't sit there and not sow anything. Be a blessing. No seed is insignificant. Whatever you have to give, it is a blessing in God's house. Would everyone please stand? I'm going to pray one corporate blessing over the seeds. So even if you sowed electronically, if your knee hurt, you got osteoarthritis, sit on down, I got you. Rheumatoid, I understand. Your feet hurt, I got you. I'm telling you, I was watching. I never been here before, so I was watching the live. I was enjoying the service, but it wasn't for that. I was trying to see if they had carpet on the pulpit. Because that's how you decide what shoes you're going to wear. <laughs> Them wood floors are short in your sermon. Thank God for carpet. I got my heels on tonight. They, they block heels, but they Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every seed that's being sown tonight. I thank you for your word that was brought tonight. I thank you for the exit strategy. This seed is going to get us out of poverty. This seed is getting us out of a broke mentality. This seed is changing our financial status. Giving is an exit strategy. And I thank you because we finally learned that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. So I thank you for those that are giving by faith and those of us that give because we know it's right to do. Bless our seed like you promised you would and we'll give you praise, glory, and honor. We'll tell the world you did it and we'll thank you for an exit strategy in Jesus' name, amen. Those of you who sold electronically, you can have your seats, but those who are giving the giving options and the, the basket is up here. Make your way. Thank you. I release you now back into the hand of this great woman of God. Before you walk out the door, let's give God a big praise for Pastor Monique Williams as she comes in Jesus' name.